Hello community! Today I'm going to show you how to code your optimal BERT tokenizer for SBIRT Extreme. You remember last time I showed you the byte per encoder tokenizer, where we had a very specific domain knowledge in our sentence and we built a tokenizer to create a beautiful tensor that we use as input to our BERT model we have to pre-train. And here you see it in 3D in all of its beauty and glory. But first things first, we have to focus on BERT tokenization. But how do we now a word piece tokenizer from scratch? You're not going to believe it. It is almost identical. But let's run through this so you can be sure that we have done this. So here we go. Instead of the BPE model, we have now our tokenizer model where we import the word piece model. Now, from the, normal, from the normalizers, we have here NFD, we have lowercase, strip accents, and the word normalizer. This is all prepared for you in the Hugging Face library, we just download it. Sometimes you also have in the word normalizer already a um, parameter you can choose to activate strip accents within the word normalizer, or you activate it outside of the word normalizer as a normalizer by itself. You have a lot of options. We just choose this path. Beautiful. Pre-tokenization. We do know that we now separate here on the white space. And we do not have to download our wiki files. Because you know that we have our wiki files here. Our raw data files already loaded. So what we say now is we import now for a trainer that trains our tokenizer on our very specific domain specific text we have a word piece trainer. And the arguments of this word piece trainer are quite similar. At first, we define a maximum vocabulary size. Let's go also with 10,500, just for demonstration purposes and a minimum frequency. Let's say it's now five. The subword prefix that I showed you here in BERT, it is this classical prefix. So we go with a classical prefix and show me the progress. Our special tokens, you know these tokens by now. And you know exactly where our files are. So this is where we have now the definition here of our trainer. And now comes the most beautiful part. We train our specific word piece tokenization model on my very specific domain specific text with a lot of very complicated medical or biochemical expression, word expression. Here we go. This is going to take also some time because we are still on a CPU with two cores. <laughs> but as you can see, we will do when we have our tokenizer, our very specific design tokenizer. Normally, you start with a higher vocabulary size, let's say 50,000 tokens. And then you go down, you check, hey, if I apply 50,000 token and you have a very complex sentence, does it? Uh, deconstruct everything into word piece token or do I have a lot of UNK unknown token and so you go down from 50,000 to 45,000 to 40,000 35,000 so you see when you reach a critical threshold when you have, you get the feeling you should not go below a certain vocabulary size but since this is our very specific tuned and designed trainer this is where you can really optimize the hyperparameter to get the perfect trainer and the perfect vocabulary for you. But this was just a tip by the side. So now we're waiting for this to finish. And as you can see, after four minutes and 13 seconds, we have our brand new word piece tokenizer. Yippee! Beautiful. Now we do the same like before. We save it. And let me show you, we have really tokenizer, tokenizer start tokenizer, yippee. Now this is exactly what we set out to do. So let's just validate, bird, word piece, here we go. Let's have a look at this. Again, we have here our very, our edit token, our special token here, beautiful, our separator, our padding token, our mask token. We have here our normalizer, yes, 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 you see here, Lowercase, strip accents, bird normalizers, beautiful. We have our pre-tokenizer. Post-processing is coming up in a second, yes. 
And then you see here we have here our yes, 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 where I start. About here, we get just 15,000. And now 15 is not enough. We don't have to talk about this. 15,000 is no way enough, but this is just for demonstration purposes that I can show you. Oh, it was just 10,000. Gee, really? Hold on a sec. Just 10,500. 10,499. 10, Spot was the last one. Now, now I am interested. <laughs> okay, this is definitely not enough. Please don't do this. At minimum, you should have about 30,000 tokens in your tokenizer in your vocabulary. So let's just do the template processing, the post processing that we get our special tokens, right? And then let's have a look if quantum chromodynamic is really available without any. Yes, look, there's no unknown token, but you see now, uh oh, pure, pure quantum chromodynamic quantum chromodynamic oh wow he really split it up my goodness <laughs> but since we are operating with self-attention in a bird layer and a feed forward network no problem we will have a positional encoding so you know uh, that our bird model contrary to the gpt model that is only right looking we will look both sides, so our quantum chromodynamic multiple expression here with the special word prefix will be reconstructed perfectly well by the system. Hey, great. And if we have an encode batch, if we have two sentences, first sentence, second sentence, hey, everything is here in the first sentence without a U and K, but you see, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Theoretical is already four and physics two. Wow. <laughs> but never mind. You do know we don't have to have words here because we have the self attention mechanism in our bird layer. This is beautifully, this is quantum chromodynamic. If it is split up or not, it works. It is the amazing power of the bird model. So great. We have the bird piece model. We have a tokenizer or WPE model applied. And so how we prepare now BERT pre-training. Now, very easy. We install our transformer library from Hugging Face. Great. Take some seconds. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Hugging Face up. Transformer. Yes. Here we go. Yes, successful installed Hugging Face on our transformer. Beautiful. Do we still have our tokenizer? Yes, it is here. So what we do now, we want to have a fast tokenizer. Now, in the old times, you only had tokenizers, but then with the, with the implementation of Rust, you have here something that performs quite fast. So unbelievable, they called it tokenizer fast. And what we want, we want to convert our special tokenizer that we just built here into a fast tokenizer. So how we do this? Well, from our Hugging Face Transformer library, we import here, since we are operating with BERT, a BERT tokenizer fast. And our new tokenizer that we create here from our old tokenizer, here's if you remember here, my file was tokenizer, or you could call it my special tokenizer, whatever you want to call it. So here is my word piece tokenizer that we just built. And I say here for the bird tokenizer fast, my tokenizer object, Jesus, is my old tokenizer and I will have now a fast tokenizer. Let's see if it works. Cross fingers. I hope it's working. That Creek uh, fast tokenizer. So do we have a tokenizer object? Yes. You see what we have now? We have now from the transformer library, the models, the bird, the bird tokenizer, bird fast. The bird tokenizer fast. Yes, succeeded. Beautiful. And you know what's beautiful now? Do you remember what I showed you here? Oops, hold on a sec. If we go here, example for bird base, so our transformer model, the bird base model, we have here quite a lot. We have the vocabulary file, we have the tokenizer configuration file, we have the tokenizer JSON file in itself, we have in general the configuration file, and then of course, 
we have here the model in itself. So let's do the preparation now as an input to our transformer model. And it is quite easy. We just say, okay, we take our new tokenizer. We say save, save pre-trained dot saved model. This is the directory, call your directory, whatever you like it. And you see now that he creates exactly what we need for our next transformer model. We have here again our vocabulary. We have our tokenizer in JSON. We have our tokenizer configuration file in JSON. And we have even a JSON file where the added tokens are located. So let's have a look at this in our directory. Here is our saved model directory. And within this directory, you find now here exactly this files vocabulary. Let's have a look at this. This is exactly here what you see. And you know that oops, we only have 15,000, no, 10,500. And here we are, 10,500 spot. This is it. Great, just for demonstration purposes, of course. Then we have special token. We have our beginning, mask, padding, separation, and unknown token. Great. Then we have our config. Here we have, again, our token. Do lowercase is true. Strip accents true. Bird tokenizer we have. And the model max length, I tell you in a second what it means. And all of this, this is our subdirectory safe model here. So what we can say, we can say, yippee, beautiful. Here we go. And just to make sure that you check if it's really a fast tokenizer. Yes, is fast is true statement. Beautiful. So if you want to have now a look at the tokenizer again, you don't have to go into files. You can do it here within your Jupyter notebook. And you see, we have here a pre-trained tokenizer fast model. Vocabulary size is 10,500. Padding, write, truncation, mask token, separation token, everything. The first time I saw here a model max length, I said, Jesus, what is this? And then I read the manual and they told me model max length is the maximum length and number of tokens for the input to the transformer model. And if no value is provided, it will default to a very large integer. So one is 30. So this is how we get this beautiful thing that I thought, hey, is this a mistake? No, this is just a default value in the current version of our tokenizer. Beautiful. So now you see here, there's my new doc, new tokenizer. <laughs> Let's encode <laughs> yeah. our beautiful sentence. And yes, of course, it is this is going to happen. And if we decode here the numerical values back, here we get now our beautiful quantum chromodynamic. <laughs> this is now how we have uh, our special tokens, our CLS token here at the beginning. And then we have here our tokenization happening of the word quantum chromodynamic. So this here is the beautiful. Uh, word piece tokenizer that we just constructed. And if you want to compare here our word piece tokenizer now to the BPE tokenizer I showed you five minutes ago, here we have it. My own tokenizer that we loaded and we have now again the same sentence, quantum chromodynamic and quantum field theory. And if I look here at the token, you see that quantum chromodynamic here is encoded in this tokens. You see, there is a significant difference how you optimize your tokenizer, the number of tokens you have in your tokenizer, the vocabulary size that you have, the complexity depends heavily on the specific text, on the sentences, on the complexity of the words, of the subwords that the tokenizer is going to create. But I think now we are ready that you know how to build your own word-based tokenizer and your very special BPE tokenizer on your very specific text on your, I don't know, 100,000 pages of biochemical formulation. Now we are ready that we have a tokenizer that we are going to take the next step and we discuss the input now to our BERT model because next step will be we have to pre-train our BERT model. I say thank you and I see you in my next video. And in my next video, we will finally come to the most important part. We pre-train our optimized BERT model.